everyone, and welcome to another episode of Podcast on Fifth Ave. I'm Jordan, here with Jenna and Taylor. And today, on Wednesday, when we were recording, the Penguins broke some news that there was a trade that occurred. They they sent Sam Lafferty to the Chicago Blackhawks in return for Alex Nylander. Not William. Alex. <laughs> His Just, brother. Cl- yes. Clear, clear the air there. It's not who you think it might be. But what... What are our thoughts on this trade? Uh, it's It seems very kind of like break even, potentially a good thing for the Penguins, not really at all a bad thing. Sam Lafferty wasn't doing a whole lot. So I, I feel like the fact that we got a return for him is solid. In my book, Jenna, what are your thoughts? Well, it was interesting because I I keep joking, like there's Buffalo connections everywhere, but I was in Buffalo covering the Sabres when Nylander was traded to Chicago. And it was funny because initially, like I was so new in Buffalo when it happened that initially I almost panicked. And I was like, wait a second, what is happening? Like same kind of thing. Everyone's like, William, Alex, which brother, who is it? So not to be confused, it is Alex. Um, but, you know, it, it, it was kind of a good, it's a good thing for the Penguins. It seems in my mind really low risk because of the fact that with Malkin being potentially as close to returning as he is, they're going to have to play a little bit of a numbers game here. It was potentially going to be a situation where they may have had to waive Lafferty in order to send him mm-hmm. down to Wilkes-Barre. And then, you know, obviously with waivers and how they go, someone could have claimed him, something along those lines. So basically it was kind of a low risk thing to – send him to Chicago where maybe he'll find, you know, a place in that lineup or who knows what exactly the role that he will fill there. Mm -hmm. But to get Nylander back, you know, he's not going to be this guy that immediately jumps into the lineup. He definitely was kind of a bust for the Sabres. He was the former eighth overall pick and then all of a sudden doesn't really perform. And then you go to Chicago. And I mean, this season himself, he's played entirely um, with their AHL affiliate. I believe he has like eight goals and 12 points something in that range Mm -hmm. um you know he's not going to be a fourth line guy right now by any means I think he'll at least in my mind what I'm picturing and Taylor I want your thoughts too but you know it seems like he's probably going to be a Wilkes-Barre guy that we might see kind of maybe come up and um if they need him to fill roles kind of potentially like an Anthony Angelo but I just don't entirely see him being this quote-unquote role player that the Sabres had envisioned him being Mm. right when uh right when they drafted him back in 2016. Uh, but Taylor, yeah. I saw you had an interesting tweet, and I f- totally remembered this too, that Rodriguez and Nylander were actually line mates in Buffalo. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Love end that. of the 2018-19 the season, and the third member of that line was Connor Sherry. Um, so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are, there are articles written about that line, like out of Buffalo. Like They, they weren't together very long, just the end of that season. I believe they were put together in March, and then obviously the Sabres typically don't play beyond uh, April. But <laughs> that's, that's correct. Yeah, but they were together. Um, some chemistry again. I don't know what would have to happen for Nylander to be reunited with Rodriguez at the NHL level because Nylander he is reporting to Wilkesbury. That's where he'll start. Um, I it, there's whenever there's a trade, there's a tendency to you know fans need to pick a side like with this. This is great. We we won this or like this is terrible. You know, a horrible trade. And it's like sometimes it's just a trade. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that it's good for the Penguins. Um, it doesn't mean that Nylander is going to ever even necessarily play for Pittsburgh. Um, but again, Lafferty, uh, he. In Tuesday's practice, he was on the the fifth line in, in practice when when all those guys came back from COVID and with Carter Malk and both on the way back, um, he was just going to be further down the the lineup. Uh, he does require waivers to be sent down to Wilkes Barre or the taxi squad if the taxi squad if you want to be on that. If you have to clear waivers to go to the minors, you would also have to clear it to go to the taxi squad. So really kind of a tough spot for Lafferty. Whereas Nylander does not have to clear waivers this season. Um, and if, you know, they like what they see from him in Wilkes-Barre or if he does come up and, and show something, he's going to be a restricted free agent when the season ends um, and they can resign him. Or if, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's big nothing, uh, they don't see a whole lot from him, then you just don't qualify him and let him walk. Uh, but, I mean, he's younger. He's 23. Um, Lafferty, again, is almost 27. It, again, there's there's potential there. He was a former first uh, first round pick, like you said. Didn't really show a whole lot to this point. 
Uh, the Penguins have a good track record with reinvigorating former Sabres in Rodriguez and Chad Ruidl. So, um, yeah, it can't hurt. Yeah, he'll get on a bulk star. He can play, I believe, both center and wing. Um, and sending, keep him in Wolf Spurry in the, in the minors for now. You know, he can get big minutes, play on uh, either center wing, whatever they want to try him, power play, penalty kill with whatever kind of situations they want to try him in, um, learn the system. And then if the injury bug, COVID bug does hit again, then he can get a shot up here. But again, it, it's really a big nothing trade. Um, I do think it's interesting who is number 92. So if he comes up, he'll be the third Penguin to wear number 92. If he keeps that number after Vokun and Takit. So um, especially with the, with the Snoop Dogg jerseys, uh, 92 mm. of the Snoop Dogg jerseys, seeing that again after Takit wore it, I think it'd be cool. But um, yeah, I'm sad to see Lafferty go. He was nice. He was, he was, he was good. Um, just a victim of the numbers here. Yeah. Yeah. Do what you got to do, unfortunately, to, to kind of figure out lines and that is obviously like you said because Malkin is returning soon like that that is imminent um his return to the ice which is exciting and the Penguins didn't need another role player in their lines because they're getting back one of the you know generational talents of this era of hockey and we know that he's not playing in tonight Wednesday's game uh Sullivan said as much but what does the actual more specific timetable look like at this point? We talked a little bit about maybe him returning at some point on the West Coast trip. Do we have a more definitive idea at this point of when he might come back? Um, so, yeah, not quite. When Malkin spoke after um, – it, it was after practice last week. I did ask if he has a sense, and he said um, at the time 10 days. He said sometime on the West Western road trip is what he said. Um, I don't – I, I asked Sullivan after Wednesday's morning skate, like, you know, Malkin said sometime on that Western road trip, is that still the target? And he kind of laughed and he's like, I guess you have to ask Malkin <laughs> because Malkin's telling everyone what his timeline is. Um, Sullivan, he didn't give a, another up, update. He, he just said he's getting closer. Um, he is full contact uh, for a while there when he was practicing. It was limited contact, um, close to full contact. Yeah, he is 100% full contact, no limitations now. So, uh, I mean, that's the last step he's... Uh, as close as he can be uh, that it's the only game before the Western road trip other than uh, Wednesdays, which he's not playing is Thursday in Philly. I don't know if Thursday in, in Philly would be too early. Um, but um, yeah, the, the Western road trip seems more likely. Cause I mean, that's like a week and a half to throw on the road. Yeah. And it's something too to like, listen to Sullivan's pregame because the way that he trends and Taylor, obviously, you know, this too, and Jordan as well, but when he says, you know, they're going to be a game time decision that usually yeah. indicates it's a classic, like <laughs> it drives us nuts and we all embrace it, but it's just one of those like, all right. So if you hear that from Sullivan, you kind of do same thing, anticipate that it's going to be some time on this road trip. I mean, they have five mm-hmm. games on the road maybe they put them in in Dallas or maybe they just totally wait till they're out in California for that three game stretch uh, against all the California teams. But um, I mean, it's going to be interesting also to see him back in the lineup and see, because this, I mean, once he gets in, ideally, depending on if there are any guys on the COVID protocols, this is going to be the healthiest this team has been all year, which is fascinating to think considering they're in the midst of, or at least as we're recording this, they had eight wins in a row. Unbelievable. Yeah. The way that they have performed, not just with the amount of guys that have been out of the lineup, but the amount of guys that have been in and out of the lineup. So even in the injuries and the COVID protocol, there has been little to no consistency across the lines. Like they've been having to change it up sometimes night to night based on who's available, who's not available, who just got hurt, who's going to be out week to week, who's a game time decision. And it's just so impressive. Not only what Mike Sullivan's done, but what the, the guys who have just been kind of moved around like chess pieces have done too, because they've really stepped up and done some amazing work this season. And um, I think it's going to be incredible to see what they do when they're fully healthy. And I know that everybody's off the COVID protocol list. No, uh, almost. Uh, so Jeff Carter came out of it Wednesday. He's, he's not playing Wednesday. Okay. Um, he, he was someone that experienced symptoms. That was his second time with COVID okay. too. I, I think he was 
asymptomatic the first time he had it, like back in mm-hmm. October, um, had symptoms this time. That's part of the reason why he's not quite ready um, to play. Um, yeah. But Drew O'Connor, Drew O'Connor tested positive, was a Tuesday. Um, so, and again, with everyone healthy, I don't think he would have been in the lineup anyway. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, everyone uh, off of off of protocol, and then once Walker comes back from injury, it's just Jason Zucker that's that's injured. Um, week to week, he did start skating uh, on his own this week, so that's a big okay. step. So um, no real timetable from him; it's still just week to week. No idea what he could possibly be dealing with, so uh, too mm-hmm. too hard to guess. But um, yeah, they're getting really close. So close! It's so exciting. Why don't we take a quick break, and we will be right back. And we are back. The Penguins broke their, well, holiday break. Uh, They played again on Sunday, and that game was drunk or on drugs or a mix of the two. That was some wild (laughs) stuff. What's really quick, just shout out one word that you would use to describe the whole thing from start to finish. Go. Bananas. I mean, I mean, wild drunk, like you said. Yeah. Um, but they six one after the first period. It seems like yeah, it's going to be like a monster blowout, and then they mm-hmm. still manage to make it interesting, and it's a one goal game. And you're like, oh my god, are they actually going to blow this? Um, but uh, then, yeah, the double hat tricks. I mean, there's so much to yeah. take away from that game. I don't know where to start. There was. Uh, it had everything. It had <laughs> absolutely everything. Drama, intrigue, Casper uh, <laughs> Bjorkvist's uh, first yeah, goal. Bjorkvist. Let's start there. Go for it, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, live in your glory. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. I, I love – my favorite games to cover are, are prospect debuts, especially when it's a guy who ha- has been around for a while and has been waiting for this. I mean, Casper, he was drafted in 2016, so he's been waiting quite a while. Um, and, uh, yeah, glad, glad to see him just get in. And, I mean, he uh, was – going to the net and being that net foot presence. So we kind of expected from him good defensively. They were using him on the PK, all the kind of stuff we expected. Um, I mean, in Wilkes-Barre this season, he only has one goal. I really wasn't expecting a whole lot of goal scoring from him, but of course he drives to the net, crashes into the net, picks up a, a loose puck and puts it in for his first goal. Um, so that was just really cool to see. Uh, and I mean, his line as a whole with Zahorn and Lafferty, we're obviously never going to see that again. But I mean, they, mm-hmm. they worked really well together. Um, the three yeah. of them teamed up for that goal. I mean, uh, Zahorn is first game of the season, too, and he looked good. Um, so, yeah. yeah, good to see those those depth pieces again. Now they're probably going to be at the lineup with, with the guys coming back healthy. But, um, yeah, just good to see them take that step. And they did. They really uh, – that's all you could ask. When I saw that that was the bottom line for the game – I winced a little bit. I was like, oh, man. Okay, this is going to be interesting. And it ended up being very, very, very interesting. So, Jenna, let's let you live in your glory now because obviously (laughs) we all know how you feel about Evan Rodriguez. And, oh, my goodness, like (sighs) COVID break didn't slow him down at all. And it's not just the fact that he's producing at such a high level, but the way that he controls the puck and just with ease and confidence and has patience to wait until the, just the right moment to shoot. Like, oh, my goodness, your boy is shining. How do you feel? Well, it's wonderful. It feels really great. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, you want to, like, sit there and just, like, you want to be happy for a player like this. And I tweeted this um, after he scored his second goal. Or actually, probably maybe it was after the hat trick. I think it was after the hat trick. But I basically said just, like, You saw him in Buffalo. You saw him here now this season. And if this season is, you know, an outlier or things along those lines, sure, albeit. But you see him playing with a confidence that I don't think we've seen from him, at least from what I remember seeing him in Buffalo versus seeing him now. And he talked about this, I want to say at some point during the season, um, where he basically, you know, was asked kind of, Ralph Kruger versus the Mike Sullivan type thing. What do you like playing under? How do you like playing under Mike Sullivan? And, I mean, this kind of also goes to further how fantastic of a coach Mike Sullivan mm-hmm. is. 
Ralph Brugger, the Ralph Brugger experiment in Buffalo did not last long. I will understandably so, but you see for, for player confidence is everything. And you just see that in him this season. And I think that's largely, obviously, you know, chicken before the egg type thing, do the goals help the confidence or do the confidence lead to the goals? Or is it a combination of both, which Mm -hmm. more than not, I think it is, but you're just seeing him go out there and play loose. And I feel like we hear that all the time, but I think this is the definition of just going out there, having confidence in your game, playing within the system the you know what we hear Mike Sullivan talk about time in and time out but you see a guy like him just really adapting to this style that Mike Sullivan is having them play and it pays off and it's paying him dividends and you know it's exciting to see for a guy like him you know his first career hat trick he's surpassed his highest goals total I believe he's like I want to say six points, five, six points away from his career points total. So, you know, he's completely on pace to have an absolute career season in so many aspects of his game. Mm -hmm. But this also is very intriguing because, again, where is he? What line is he going to play on when Malkin comes back now? I think that's a huge question, too. Yeah, everything's up in the air. It's crazy. You just don't know. I mean, I would like to see, I mean, we know Rust and and Malkin have had success before, so you could see something like Rust goes down to play with Malkin and maybe Rodriguez Mm -hmm. can can go back to playing on the top line. I mean, they have a whole lot of options, so uh, Mm -hmm. it'll it'll be interesting. But I mean, mean, Rust, he gets a hat trick too, Uh, double hat tricks. That was the first time since, like, it was was December 2008. Um, Sakura and Dupuis and everyone pointed out that they both wear – nine and 17 like like you know rodriguez and Russ, voodoo. So weird stuff my favorite rodriguez thing lately i mean we've been talking to him in a lot of post games because he's been scoring a lot and he shows up with like the game stat sheet like a basketball coach and like reads over it while you're asking him questions <laughs> like i was so curious oh like goodness. what is he checking um it just feels like a flex like he brings it in and he's just checking like his name and like three under the goal column like <laughs> over and over but remember when he did it like you know two games ago or whatever uh, when he was leaving, I think, like, Michelle Cracciola asked him, like, what are you doing with the stat sheet? And he's, like, meeting my daily reading in. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's a goofy guy. Um, but I, I love that he's just bringing that. It feels like a flex. I don't think that's what he's doing, but that's what it looks like. <laughs> I want him to go home and like put it on the fridge. Like I just want that to like, or like on the bulletin board over the phone, like put it there, let it live in its glory. Mm-hmm. Um, and can we also talk about the moment, <laughs> Taylor, obviously you were there for this. I saw this at the press or, you know, in the post game press conference or the post practice press conference and tweeted it. But the moment where uh, Brian Rust uh, decides to be a member of the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins media and ask him who his favorite player is. And it was amazing. It was a beautiful <laughs> moment, you know, so oh, great. Was asking that in the press conference. And then after was it after Rodriguez scored his hat trick or was that? Yeah. Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. Rodriguez yeah. Yeah. The Penguins tweeted out a video and it was Russ going over to Rodriguez and said, you're my favorite player. So you just like, those are the moments you love to see. I love yeah. when the players jump in press conferences or media scrums like that. My favorite moment, I don't know, I can, it was when Tristan Jari was in Wilkes-Barre and like they had a practice here. So I was able to cover it in person. And there's like, I think it was the players, Chris Summers he really wasn't around. No one's going to know who that is, but um, he got in Jari's scrum and asked him like, do you still want to be a goalie or do you want to be like a forward or do you have higher aspirations? Jari's like, no, I want to be a goalie. And they just kind of went back and forth like that with like very dry (laughs) Jari answers to him. Um, I don't know. Yeah. uh, He was like holding like another player put like a glove on the end of the stick and was holding like a boom mic. Um, Crazy (laughs) stuff like that. I miss being in the locker room and having like weird stuff like that happen. But uh, yeah, cool stuff. I feel like if we're talking about that game though, I feel like we have to talk about Casey to Smith. Um, Yeah. Because, oh. yeah, for the Sharks to get back in it, not all of those goals were his fault. I mean, mm-hmm. two of them in particular stand out that they were just weird bounces and really not yeah. at all. But yeah. it, other than those two games on that previous Western road trip, was it um, Seattle and uh, Vancouver, I think, the ones where he played in out there where he played well? Um, mm. He's really not been good this season, and I don't know what yeah. the answer is. Um I don't know. Louis Deming is is the third goalie at this point uh, in Wilkesbury. He's the only one down there without. Well, he's not down there anymore. But of the goalies in Wilkesbury, the only ones with uh, any NHL experience. Uh, his career numbers aren't exactly great. They're pretty 
average uh, all time. I, I don't know. He's he was good in Wilkesbury before you know he got hurt and had you know a little COVID situation of his own. Um, back in November, he did have a really good start. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if 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 we're gonna see. I don't think we're gonna see him at this point. I don't know when we would see him unless they don't think Jari is uh, ready to start on Thursday because he was symptomatic too. Um, was Smith is playing Wednesday, so you'd think Jari's mm-hmm. starting Wednesday. If not, Domingue would be the guy. Um, I don't know if you throw him into a game just see what he has, but uh, I, I don't know how much confidence you can have into Smith right now. Um, yeah, looking at his whole body of work, and I don't really know what the answer is. Yeah, you almost think that maybe in kind of a, a lower risk setting, why not throw Louis Domingue in and just see what he's capable of? Because you do need to get a sense of what your goalie situation is. And they they were riding the hot hand pretty heavily before the COVID break. And they did give, obviously, they gave Casey DeSmith a couple starts on the, the Western Canada trip just to relieve Jari of some of that weight but going down the stretch I would imagine if Jari keeps playing as well as he was they won't they won't be relying too too much on whoever is sitting behind him but you need to know especially since the Penguins are poised to make a run at the playoffs like you do not want to have a collapse like you did last year in net and I'm not saying that Jari will but you want to know that the guy who's backing him up is at least capable of not doing what Casey DeSmith has done pretty much yeah. all season. And you want to figure it out, like you said, like now, and it's low risk because you don't want to get to how it was last season where DeSmith is hurt. It's Jari and mm-hmm. Max, Le- Max Legacy as his backup in the playoffs. And the only game Max Legacy played that season was the last game of the regular yeah. season against Buffalo. So he really didn't play an NHL team all season. <laughs> so you want to get, I, I think you'd want to see Domingue at least, you know, in a game here coming up because you don't want to get to a situation like that where it's the playoffs like it was last year and Jari's mm-hmm. struggling, but do you throw Legacy in because you really haven't seen him against a good team at all? Yeah. You don't know what he can do. Um, so I think, yeah, put Legacy in one of these games coming up. Um, when it's not quite as high risk. Yeah. And obviously, like, we are recording this before the Blues game, but this game for Casey DeSmith is kind of going to be a good test, quote-unquote. Yeah. See exactly where he is. The Blues are a really good hockey team. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. Obviously, you're listening to this. Hopefully. Well, actually, yeah, you're listening to this on Thursday or a day after. So hopefully, you know, that part of it comes through. But this, you know, what's going to happen with DeSmith here is kind of a good, hey, Mm -hmm. here's a barometer of where you are right now. He's going to yep. like post a shutout and make us look stupid. <laughs> yep, which is fine. I'll, I'll take that. Oh, we'll we'll take him. Him. <laughs> like he has been all season. He's going to make like, like 56 staves. It's going to be ridiculous. Prove <laughs> <laughs> us wrong, Casey. Do it, please. Oh my God. Why don't we take one more break and we will be right back. And we're back. I feel like Kasperi Kapanen is always kind of making waves on social media. Um, and the waves are just so big that they kind of keep going until he makes the next one. But he recently was pictured on social media sleeping, bundled up on the floor. And it it created a lot of uh, questions among people as to who it was. They didn't really... Not hockey fans. Know at all yeah it was i don't know where the yeah. original yeah i mean this is just some goofy we thought it was hilarious so we have to talk about it but i don't know where how the original picture got out into the public it was, it was just taken off of someone's instagram story mm-hmm. um but it went around and it was like uh someone said like oh i didn't know harry styles ever ever slept like i thought it was harry styles because you really can't see Kapanen in the in the in the picture but i mean i'll, I'll hold it up but I yeah, mean, you see like, like the hair and the tattoos. Yeah, so yeah. People, someone was like, "Well, I didn't know Harry Styles uh, sleeps," and that that got like thousands of retweets. Like it was really going around um, with like Harry Styles fans. And then the person who posted that replied, and um, they said, "So I just woke up, and apparently that's actually Justin Bieber." I guess they were giving <laughs> like, "No, that's not Harry Styles. That's Justin Bieber." Another 
got of tattoos, but um, and they're like, I did some research and I can't find anything. Maybe a fan could confirm this to me. And then someone quote tweeted it and was like, that's literally just some random Instagram model's boyfriend. <laughs> because like, <laughs> Kevin's girlfriend is like an Instagram model. But yeah, they're just like, it's literally some random Instagram model's boyfriend. But then that went around and the hockey fans found it. And then, cause I remember I was covering practice that day and it was Kevin's first day out of the COVID protocol. And I you know tweeted it. I'm getting like a bunch of replies calling him like Harry Styles or Justin Bieber. Or they're like, good to see the random Instagram model's boyfriend back out on the ice. I'm like, what is happening? Um, it's wild. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Him calling stirs and the Harry Styles and Justin Bieber fandoms like inadvertently <laughs> because they both think it's him. And like, really, he doesn't look anything like either of them. Maybe the hair for Harry Styles, but even then, Captain's like blonde. Harry Styles. Not <laughs> <laughs> um, very funny stuff on this- social. I love it was classic. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Was, Go it's ahead. so funny too. Because like we're in our own hockey bubble, so for us, we're mm-hmm. like, oh my god, of course that's Casper Cap. Or like you'd see that picture and be like, oh yeah, of course. Whereas like I, I genuinely forget sometimes that like there's a chunk of the population that doesn't pay attention to sports and doesn't watch <laughs> anything in that way. And the fact that they're like, who is this guy? I'm like, oh. God. It's amazing. Honestly, I am mm-hmm. here for it. Let's like get him like his name tag and then his locker room should be like Casperi Kapanen, aka <laughs> Harry Styles, aka Justin Bieber, aka that random Instagram. <laughs> Something to that extent. Wasn't there a Cheeks Clappanen tie in with that post too? Was it didn't that bring it full circle? Yeah, well, yeah, P- Kapanen commented like on on an Instagram picture one time, Cheeks Clappanen. Um, and it was, it was, it was one of that girl's pictures, but I mean, if you look at anything Kapanen puts out on like Instagram, you look in the comments, it's all people commenting your cheeks to Kapanen because, yep. um, I don't know, Kapanen's just funny on, on, on social media. He's got a great sense of humor and he definitely rolled with it. Uh, did he respond to, to all of that nonsense? I didn't I see anything. I don't think so. The, the girl who posted like the picture, I don't know if that's his girlfriend dating, whatever, but she saw it and was responding to the memes like that's not Harry Styles um so I feel like he has to be aware of it at this point but uh, oh my god too much he's hilarious and other good news though like legitimate good news Brian Boyle and his wife had a baby uh what when was that Saturday Sunday was over the weekend it was New Year's Day um he told the story you know so the Penguins practice on New Year's Day it was like a 10 30 practice and um he he didn't he didn't practice at the time we just were told personal reasons and you always hope that's a good thing um personal reasons but uh yeah there was new year's day he said you know they were in a meeting before practice so it was like a 10 o'clock um and he got he said he can't like get his apple watch working so texts weren't coming through and then he comes out of the meeting and he has like you know miss you know textman's wife so he calls her and she said, you know, she thought she might be in labor, but she's like, go out and practice. Uh, you know, I don't know how soon it's going to be. And then Boyle's sister, who is a doctor, went, you know, to see Boyle's wife uh, at, at his house because Boyle's family is in Massachusetts. Um, they don't live here because he has he had two kids already were in school, mm-hmm. hockey, sports, all that. So they didn't move with him when he signed in Pittsburgh. Um so Boyle's sister goes over to his house in, in Hingham, Massachusetts and sees his wife and then immediately calls Boyle and was like, do not practice, get on the first plane, you can get out of there. Um, so <laughs> Boyle said by now it was about like 1030. Uh, the next flight, uh, the, the Penguins team services manager, Jason Seidling, got him a flight for I think it was like 1140. Um, he said luckily the flight was delayed a little bit, so he, he just made it. Um, he got, he, he, so yeah, he flew into Boston, got to the hospital in Boston. He said he was by his wife's side at 322. Uh, the baby was born at 333. So he just made it. Uh, Holy cow. Yeah. That son, was down to the son, wire. Yeah. His son named Callum. He said his wife uh, and his son are doing very well. Um, but I mean, just crazy stuff. And I mean, the, the sacrifices these guys go through, I mean, cause he's, not with his family most mm-hmm. of the year. And, I mean, they had the baby New Year's Day, and then I think it was the the fourth. Yeah, the the fourth. He he um came back that morning, so he was only there. Wow. They took their baby home from the hospital on the third. The next day, he has to leave. Um, and yeah, he talked about how his wife has been, um, you know, just t- doing everything, taking care of the kids. I mean, 
we did I, we didn't even know she was pregnant i mean because he doesn't really post on social media it's not like he's talked about it mm. but, i mean very pregnant he said she, you know it's still taking you know their son like to and from hockey practice and doing all that and he said he got home for uh christmas and he said you know it looked like it was out of a magazine the way she decorated so i mean these sacrifices the guy these guys and wow. their families go through because he's not the only one that's like that um Jason Zucker, his wife and kids don't live in Pittsburgh full time. I feel like they're able to. Jason has he has three kids. Um, the the first one, not it's his stepdaughter, but you know he calls her um, his daughter. But you know, so I think she stays back in Minnesota some maybe a little bit more to see her like biological dad. Um, but then you know his wife also has to be there with their two younger kids. I know they come visit maybe more often. I think what Malkin's wife is in Florida, I think, yeah. um, with their son. There are a couple of other examples, um, not all coming to mind right now, but, you know, there, there are a lot of that, like, where guys not seeing their families for, you know, months at a time. Really. Yeah. That's it's, rough. I can't believe that. Yeah. Hmm. Congrats to him and his family, too. Yeah. Let's also pose the question, if you're having a child – do you want your husband there only for like the last 10 minutes? Cause I'm not going to lie. I thought about that. I'm like, that might kind of be better. Like, you miss all the worst part. Or it's like, at least you want the option to like call him in and be like, okay, now go away. Like, yeah. A little bit. So you get the 10 minutes out of him where you're like, this is great. Yeah. I need you here for the hardest 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I would want some space for that first little bit. And you don't know how long it's going to be. Like whenever yeah. I'm in pain, like leave me alone. Get, <laughs> get out of my face. And may, I don't, maybe she's not like that, but I feel like Jenna, you're right. They may be onto something. Um, I could be like the next wave of parenting and childbirth. The, Who knows? the, new, the new model for childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, one last thing, because I know that we have some, I almost said Canada updates, sort of, Olympic updates. Taylor, hit us with those. Yeah, so uh, obviously the NHLers aren't going, uh, and that also includes players who are on NHL contracts. Um, so it, the question becomes for, for the teams like USA or Canada, who are would typically be fully NHLers, uh, who fills those teams? It's usually, you know, college guys, junior guys, guys maybe not playing, guys uh, on minor league deals like AHL contracts. And then uh, Scott Wheeler with uh, – he's a reporter with The Athletic. Uh, he came out with Canada's long list right now, so the list of players that they're really looking at to choose from to uh, build the team. I'm not going to read all. It's a very long list. But um, some highlights uh, as far as – prospects Cole Perfetti Owen Power Mason McTavish um the one that I think stands out on here Eric Stahl because he's not playing anywhere right now but uh I, I, his Jordan was asked about this uh Tuesday Monday um and he said uh he talked about you know he said obviously I think Eric would like to go he said Eric still wants to you know work back to getting like mm. an NHL deal somewhere and playing in the NHL but um, Eric Stahl, if, if he can get into the Olympics and, and do well, I think that would, that would really help his case. I think that's cool. Um, yeah. Scott Wilson, a uh, former Penguins prospect. I think he was a seventh round pick in like 2012, around that, that year. Um, he's on an AHL deal right now in Charlotte. Uh, so he's eligible. It would be cool to see him. Um, Michael Delzato. Uh, Josh Hosang, another name people know. Uh, Cal O'Reilly is a former Wilkes-Barre Penguin. He plays for the Flyers AHL affiliate right now. And then uh, Chris Bigra, who is a defenseman in Wilkes-Barre on an AHL contract. Um, he's on the he's on the list. So um, these aren't the, this isn't the full list. I think yeah, Scott Wheeler. If you look him up on Twitter, he he has a list. But uh, Chris Bigra. Uh, so I was looking at some of the forwards on that list. And Felix Robert, I know I've been talking about Felix Robert a lot. It, he's Canadian on an AHL contract, and he's scoring at a higher rate than some of these forwards. And he is a very good, you know, defensive forward, and um, it does all the little things like that. So I don't. Again, this isn't the full uh, list. Scott Wheeler said, you know, there's some players that he doesn't have. Um, so maybe uh, he could be a possibility. But just looking at some of the other forwards on there, like I'm like I don't. Felix Rare is not that far off from, from these guys. So uh, it'll be interesting to see who makes the team. Yeah. 
Sure will be. And it'll be fun to see at least some, some names that could have some significance in the NHL in years to come, at least participate. And it's good that they can, especially in the case of Eric Stahl, kind of get back to that and potentially find their way back to the NHL. That's fun. Just looking forward to the Olympics. We're less than a month away, which is hard to believe. Um, but that, that'll be a lot of fun to keep up with and keep tabs on. But thank you, everybody, for listening. As always, uh, make sure that you're subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts. We drop new episodes every Thursday, so hit that subscribe button as soon as possible so you don't miss a single episode. We will see you next week. <laughs>